So, um, I just want to do a quick demonstration here. Sorry, my, my head's cut off, but I uh, just want to show you a few things. And this is, uh, a lot of this is actually for, uh, for Josh. Josh Smith, I notice he's uh, starting to do uh, filler and, and, uh, and rubbing his paint down and, on, or his uh, bodywork down. And anybody else actually that, that wants. Now, um, Amir is more of the, uh, of the bodywork supremo than I am, especially in the paint department. So, ah, yeah, there you go. Uh, anyway, um, so uh, what we're going to do is, is, this is a door that we put a new, uh, the frame was all done. It was all sandblasted and repaired. And then we put a new uh, door skin on it. And the fact that you've got another door skin doesn't mean that it's absolutely perfect. Um, and so there is always some, some little repairs or sometimes they get a bit of a dink on them when they're in transit, whatever. So the thing I wanted to say basically, as I say, if it's somebody like uh, Josh where he's a young guy and he's not familiar with this, sticking loads of filler on something is not going to cut it. You know, the panel needs to be straightened. Uh, and the, the real expert on this is Trev, isn't it? Uh, Trev's blog. Uh, this guy's brilliant. But um, as I say, we're no experts on it, but I think, we have, I think we've got a pretty good handle on, on it, some of the jobs we put out. So um, I'm going to go over a few things that we, that we do, and, and hopefully it'll help. Uh, and then I'm going to show you a picture of uh, the ETOT shell that uh, Amir's working on. And what you would have seen from the, uh, the, the, the video previous to this, you would have seen the amount of filler that was on the quarter panels. And now when you look at it and you see how much is cut back, um, you can see how much work goes into this stuff. Anyway, the bottom line is, um, so with filler, you want to be skimming it. It just, just, just be a very slight skim of filler. If it's more than a few mil, it, then it's too much. You need to get the panel straight and then fill it, or lead load it, then fill it, whatever. Lead loading is extremely good because it's metal and it's the same material, and it'll be there long after the car, or long after the metal work is gone. But you do get micro scratches in it. Um, high build primer will get rid of some of that, but not all of it. So you have to do it. So you start off with, you know, the lower the, the, the number of the paper, the, the rougher the grade, the higher it is. You know, for instance, you go from, say, 80 to 120 to 280. There's different ones. And you go right up to 2,000, 3,000 uh, when you want to. Uh, have, when you have some problem with paintwork and you want to, uh, without repainting it, you can get the paintwork to come back up again. So, I've got some 80 here because we've got filler on it, and I wanted to show you this. This is this is just a, a, some cheap black black paint, and what I've done is is I've actually tried to. What, what you're trying to do when you fill or when you put filler on is you want to get rid of the high and the low spots. So on this particular case, I've feathered the edges with a DA and by hand, with only 80. Um, and I can feel that there's a dent right there, or, or as, a, as a small um, concaveness there. And it obviously needs filler in it. Now, what I've done is, just to show you, I've put this guide coat on it. So basically all it is is, is, is paint, dark color is best, and just give it a very light skim. That's too much, and there it's just about right. All you want to do is, as you now start rubbing down, you start to see what what is left and that'll show you what's high and low so i'll quickly do this and uh, and i'll show you what's going on so i'll put the hoover on it be a bit noisy for a sec things you can see here is, is what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to work all the panel one of the things I noticed with Josh while he's been working is is instead of using circular motion to get a good surface area or a flat surface area he's, he's, he's doing this you don't want to be going back with the forwards all you're going to do is create a groove when you do that you want to be going in circular motions and large circular motions 
And then obviously, the, once you've got this more feathered, you go to a 120 or a 280 or 400, whatever you want, and get it better and better because particularly with the dark color, it will show the transition from the metal onto the filler. And what you're trying to do is get rid of this transition line so it's a, so that so the, the, uh, trans, there is no transition, it's just one, one piece. Okay, so I'm going to turn this back on and carry on and show you. So I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to zoom in now hopefully Yeah Okay sorry I'll come back out a little bit Sorry about the compressor being on but you can see there now like this where I put this green ring to show it up you can see exactly that there's a dent in there or not, not a dent but a, a low spot and here pretty much all of the uh, um, uh, guide coat has gone so it's showing that this area is, is fairly good and obviously this is 80 grit but, but you can see that that's a d dimple there so we can clean that back up and put a very fine skim of filler on that and let me come back out again. I'll come back out. And we can just put a little very skim of filler on that so we now know that that's the only area that needs to be retreated. Ah, the compressor's gone off, so that's good. So we know that that's just the only area. And that's the nice thing about guide coat, but all you want is this, this, the merest uh, mist on it, a light. You can see that's a little bit too heavy. Just a light coat, so as I as I go through it, it just, I can't do it because it's wet, but as I go through it, you can see it's coming, it'll come back off again. And that guide coat will help you to, and to see where everything is. Okay, so a couple of quick things. So another thing I noticed Josh is using one of these. This is actually, okay, the, these are quite a good tool. They, they come with a spring clip on the ends. But this is okay for flat areas, but you cannot... With it being as hard as that and, and plastic, you cannot use something like that for, for a curved or convex um, panel. So there's that style. There's another style here, which is rubber. And then obviously you, you have spikes on these and you pull your paper over and they just snap them in between. Again, this is hard and sometimes you need it for flat areas. But to go around, these, the other style is, is this, which is a a sponge block but a fairly heavy sponge and then you can put your paper onto it like this is another way to do it um, and obviously the DA you can do the bigger ones but but uh, or the it's, DA is dual action um, and then you can uh, uh, do whatever you need on different sizes so if you've got something that's flat r r you can even get larger than this two and a half three times the size of this thing uh, but then you're getting into more professional stuff Okay, the last thing I wanted to talk about was, before I show you the E-type, is these DAs, they have holes in them so you can put a vacuum on them, which gets rid of about 80% of the dust, 90%, um, and you should definitely use a mask because you get a lot of dust down your lungs. And the other thing is, is try not to dig it in. There are sometimes, I see people and they're doing this, and they're trying to use the edge to, to, to get that down. If you get this down too quick and not the rest of it, you can end up with a with a curve on it. So I'll, I'll show you now. I'm going to stop the camera and I'll show you uh, what Amir has been up to. Okay, so you you would have seen this yesterday. I'll come around this side, and you would have you would have seen this yesterday where the whole side was basically covered in filler, and you can and you can see from this. What you, what the one you've seen previous to this video is where he'd, he'd already done it, I believe, what, twice? And then the last one you saw in the video is where he'd put another skim on and left it overnight. That was not for any particular reason, but he got to a point 
and, and obviously letting it harden up because otherwise it takes a while to harden in between. But you can see how much he's had to go back to get this panel correct. And obviously again in this situation you could use a guide coat. I mean Amir has the experience and feel with his hands and, and, he, and with his eyes. But the guide coat is the way to go. You can check with a guide, very, very light. You give it a rub all over. All the guide coat will come off very quickly. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't have to be 2K, but you must get it all off, obviously. And you can see the difference. But these top quarter panels on both the cars, in fact, I don't think, realistically, there was a straight panel on this car. That, that, that will give you an idea. So I'll come down into the camera shot. So, so there was, I don't think, uh, Amir's just at the side of me here, and I don't think there was a straight panel anywhere on this car. Uh, in fact, to be honest, the only thing that's left of the original car is the front bulkhead and the back bulkhead. Everything in between the car is brand new. Everything internally in the car is brand new. Um, really, it's just that front bulkhead the rear bulkhead and these two quarter panels were the only thing that was left. And consequently, what are the things that we're repairing now? The things that were left on the car that were original to the car, not what we put on, although the doors is something slightly different. We had to do some repair work on the doors because uh, they weren't quite fitting quite right. Um, and this is why, but they do get damaged in transit. They get damaged when you're moving them around and so on. So we hope this helps. Um, and like I say, Amir can do this with his hands, but even so, the pinholes and everything else, it's very difficult. The guide coat's the way to go. So Josh, keep going. You're doing a great job. I mean, for a lad your age and what you're doing, uh, we're all behind you, and I hope this helps somebody else as well. So, see ya.